We are living in a world of information. We homo sapiens, by very nature, are a kind of a sponge that absorbs even the slightest change that happens in its surroundings. We can make the complex most decisions by looking around us in our vicinities. We have been blessed with multiple tools, for example, our senses of hearing, touch, taste, and smell, in order to assess what is wrong with us. We can tell others that something is not fine by just expressing it through our emotions of anger, anxiety, love, and hate. We can make the bad days feel a little better by just diving into a pool of memories that we collect since we start gaining consciousness. We can also uh, uh, tell others, like, uh, uh, for example, when you are walking in a street uh, in Tokyo at night. Have you ever experienced those multiple sign neon boats, commercially lit facades that give us a completely ephemeral world that we cannot even imagine with the enhancement or with the cooperation of technology? Have you ever tried to feel the texture of a tree bark or a leaf with a hand of yours? And also, have you ever tried to remove a pebble out of your way while walking back home after work? Have you ever been driven in? A memory, in a very beautiful memory that is related to something very common in routine, but not like while dropping your son or while talking with a uh, friend of yours in a street that has driven back you, uh, to you to something that has happened to you in the past. I believe that all this is information that we collect on everyday basis. For example, when you pour a coffee in a mug, have you ever noticed the exotic aroma, the captivating color, and the beautiful sound that it produces? And most importantly, when we are stuck in a traffic jam and just getting late, we start looking at our wristwatch repeatedly, and our heart starts to beat fast, like we are getting late. And today, our boss is going to say there's something wrong. So, I believe that this is all different kind of information that we are having from centuries, and we humans are possessing it. Humanistic characteristics of senses, emotions, memories, and experiences from the past, but we keep on practicing those intrinsically without even noticing them. Let me give you another example. We all know convenience stores. These convenience stores are 24-hour utilities that we cannot even imagine our lives without them. For example, these are like acting our lounges as our lounges as our.、Um, Coffee shops, cafes, as our refrigerators, as our kitchens, or our dining rooms these days. So, but when you just start looking beneath the surface, for example, there is a luxurious display of different items that are completely deprived from their authentications. Strand-wrapped images, colorful, beautiful, in specialized lighting, and all、uh, based or made possible due to technological advancement. When you look beneath that surface, what we have is this matrix of information. For example, lighting, color, texture, or any irregularities that you notice. And when this information, I believe, starts to make sense out of itself, for example, when something is getting short in a refrigerator and it starts to adjust its temperature or its amount accordingly itself, we don't have to operate it. And when the lighting starts to adjust itself in a convenience store. Without the help of a person, then what I call this is for me is artificial intelligence. Then a very interesting question emerges: that why do we need this artificial intelligence to be a part of us? For example, to start with, I will say to start with our homes, our personalized vicinities. Have you ever imagined that these can be a part of yours? AI can be a part of yourself, your personalized area. I will show you some examples like. These days, we have a robot that delivers mail, dinner, and medicine to your doorstep within a two-kilometer radius,、uh, using a GPS kind of a technology. Also, we have a helicopter delivery robot that can deliver postal mail to your house in the remote areas. That is being experimented in Japan for remote delivery、uh, areas. Third, we have、um, like taxi autonomous taxi trials have already begun in Tokyo for Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics 2020. Next. AI robots are already teaching Japanese kids English language, and we all know Pepper, a very famous robot that possesses emotions or expresses it, what it is feeling about through different kind of gestures. And the next is Musashi, that recently drove a car in Aichi Prefecture in Tokyo, Japan.、Uh, in Aichi Prefecture, sorry, not in Tokyo, but in Japan, uh, Tokyo. Uh, so uh, by using its 
have fingers and toes. So these kind of innovations are going to be around you within just a period of five to 10 years, and you will be noticing them regularly. Basing on these kind of experiments, what I believe is that architecture is neglecting this most important social, political, and economical change that is happening around us with the help of artificial intelligence. In order to cooperate all this in my architectural design, I recently presented a design, uh, as you can see, this at uh, a, a conference at Pyeongchang, South Korea, last October, that was arranged by architectural institutes of China, Japan, and uh, South Korea. In this uh, poster, you can see, I have also expressed the relationship between senses, emotions, memories, and experiences that we possess, and how these are being transformed with the advancements in artificial intelligence. The most important question that I want to answer through my architectural designs is, for example, considering architecture itself as an artificial intelligence, not as something that architecture is a dead thing and you have to insert artificial intelligence in it, no. For example, when there is some robot equipped with artificial intelligence back at home with your older parents and you are out of the city, how will you feel when that robot starts to make decisions out of itself? Uh, it's one example. And in another example, when you are back at home and you are with your, uh, a robot is doing a babysitting to your uh, like toddler, how will you feel when you are at work? Will you be able to concentrate sufficiently making or giving your responsibility to a robot that is equipped with AI? These are just some simple questions that are starting to popping up in the newspapers or in the media, but we have to answer them very clearly. And being an architect, I believe that it is my responsibility to answer these questions with the help of AI. Recently, in a research paper, I expressed these thoughts like 1.23 million jobs in the sector of construction and civil engineering in Japan have been already eliminated due to advancements in robotics and prefabricated materials. Also, uh, from uh, Frey and Osborne from the University of Oxford, they have given us a probability chart that uh, those professions that need creative and designer thinking are not going to be eliminated in the next 10 to 15 years at the most. But those disciplines that need assembly lineage, productions, or automations, these are going to be eliminated completely. For example, architects, architectural designers, interior designers, or construction and engineering managers, these jobs are not going to be eliminated. And being an architect, I think I don't have to worry about this for the next 10 to 15 years as my job is safe for the time being. So apart from this design, in my lab, whenever I have time, some uh, free time from my daily research work, or at home, when my son is not like bothering me enough, I normally draw lots of sketches like about how I can incorporate that automation that is being carried with AI in different kind of sketches. So this is like what, how I want to express myself through my architecture. And I think, yes, uh, it will not be sufficient enough to explain this design. Okay. So um, in conclusion, what I want to say is architecture, as you can imagine, uh, from your home, from your room, you can see, has always been intelligently uh, sufficient for us. It is not a new concept to introduce artificial intelligence in architecture, not at all. We have been building intelligent and also artificial architecture from centuries. The only thing that is going to happen now is like how that architecture makes decisions out of itself for our betterment. This is what we have to answer in short. Thank you.